thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, several arrests are made in Burkina Faso in the wake of a reported coup attempt. Security sources say that several suspects are also on the run. Also, although Tunisia was decades ahead of many other countries in the region and the world in giving women the right to choose whether to go ahead with unwanted pregnancies, taboos remain. And the African wine markets are becoming increasingly full-bodied as the industry goes from strength to strength. I speak to a Nigerian wine expert who's cultivating a love story between African food and French wines and offering a bridge between European producers and markets on the continent. But first, four officers have been detained for questioning in Burkina Faso a day after the military government announced that it had thwarted a coup attempt. It came nearly a year to the day since junta leader Captain Ibrahim Traore seized power in the West African country. Clarice Fortuné has more. A coup within a coup. After several days of rumours and denials, the military junta in power ended up announcing it had thwarted a coup attempt. Through a televised statement, they said that officers and others planned to destabilise the country with the dark intention to attack the institutions of the Republic and plunge the country into chaos. Tuesday evening, thousands of people took to the streets of the capital Ouagadougou following a call from Tororé supporters to defend him amid rumours of a coup on social media. French media outlet Jeune Afrique was suspended in the country after the publication of two articles about tensions within the military. Four officers were detained, with two others set to be on the run. The coup attempt comes nearly a year since junta leader Captain Ibrahim Traoré seized power in the West African nation on September 30, 2022. His takeover was the country's second coup in eight months. Now, the 28th of September marks International Safe Abortion Day. Now, for Tunisia, it's been 50 years since women were given the right to choose whether to go ahead with the pregnancy or not. A decision that was far ahead of many other countries in the region and the world. But despite this, abortion is still a social taboo today. Our correspondents sent us this report. In this clinic in Tunis, Selma has just finished a follow-up with her gynecologist after her first pregnancy termination. There's nothing left. This is your uterus. She stands by her choice, but she wishes to remain anonymous. I'm still afraid of the stigma attached to this choice. Social public opinion, even people I know. It's a fear which made her go directly to the private sector, despite abortions being free at public sector clinics. I read a lot about the experiences of other people. Most Tunisian women who went to the public system spoke about their interaction with medical staff who weren't professional, with people who tried to change their minds or delay it endlessly. Delays can also prevent women from taking the simpler option of an abortion pill. Tunisia doesn't allow the medication for women who are more than nine weeks pregnant. After that, they need to turn to surgical abortion. The procedure is rarely available due to a lack of resources and staff. In the private sector, abortion is expensive, costing about 600 dinars, or about 180 euros. It's true that it's a right. Family planning in Tunisia was truly the jewel of the Arab Muslim world. We were at the forefront of access to abortion in 1973, even before France. It's a shame where we are, here, now, and that we're regressing. Some doctors and feminist activists continue to fight to change attitudes and raise awareness about this right. Since 2012, this organization has been training medical staff. We've developed our trainings a lot, especially what we call the clarification of values to change the attitudes of providers and to challenge the negativity towards women. The right to abortion has managed to survive the resurgent conservatism that followed the 2011 revolution, but it is still under threat. The continuing economic crisis of the last decade has drastically hit health and family planning budgets. 
Now, Russian President Vladimir Putin said that relations with South Sudan are developing intensively. The country's leader, Salva Kiir, was in Moscow this week, claiming that he sees the meeting with Putin as an opening for closer ties with the Kremlin in the future, even as going as far to say that in the search for strong friends, Kiir sees no alternative to Russia. Now, Russia was one of the first countries to recognize the sovereignty of South Sudan, which is the world's youngest country. Now, the wine market in Africa has been going from strength to strength. It's increasingly popular amongst the continent's growing urban middle class, wielding hefty spending power. Revenue for the region's already topped $9 billion for this year, and that's expected to grow by almost 4% annually until 2027. Now, here in France, Nigerian Chinedu Rosa is a rare voice in the sector and the founder of Vines by Rosa in Bordeaux. She's a wine expert who runs a consultancy that creates bridges between French and European wineries and African markets. She joins me now. Uh, Chinedu, thanks so much for speaking to me. Now, let's start off with your, your own particular story. You used to be a banker. What made you make the leap from the world of finance into the world of wine. Thank you so much for having me, my dear. Um, unfortunately, my voice is quite bad because of the mental, I'm right in the middle of the mental week. Um, <laughs> but to answer your question, um, yes, I was a banker and uh, my late husband at the time, um, he was importing wines and um, the wines he was importing wasn't great. So I said to him, you know, even for two euros, I'm sure we can find something better. And voila, I started coming to France and I was doing wine selections. And that was how it started. And I just fell in love. You know, so I, I started off by talking about how robust the wine market in, in Africa is. Do, do you agree? What more insight can you give us? And, and how do uh, European wineries cater to that potential? Well, Georgia, to be truthful, the potential of the Nigerian wine market is enormous. It's growing and growing every day. We are going close to over $9 billion. And honestly, um, the European wine market needs to step up. The American market is doing a good job. Some of the European markets are doing a good job. But why I'm here specifically in Bordeaux and France is to help them work on their marketing skills and really going into the African market themselves, seeing what is loved by the Africans and really creating the partnership between the African wine importers, the people who drink their wine, and also, you know, opening the door for them to experience more about the wine. And there's business to be done for everybody. The money, the, it's, it's enormous. You, you, you just can't believe it. But when you're How saying cater specifically to what African markets are looking for, what is that? Is it any different from what markets in other regions in the world may or may not be looking for? Definitely. When, you, when they wanted to go into the Chinese market, they spent the time to study the people, study the market, study the culture. When you want to go into a country, you need to study what makes them, what their taste buds are like what they like to eat. What I like to eat is not what the Frenchman would like to eat. I can put some spices and they would not understand it. So what kind of wine can actually pair with the foods from Africa? That is the first key. And then you educate, education, letting people know why this wine works with your food. It's all about investment, investing in the people who are ready to be your clients. And that is key for the French market. And that's but, what I want to do. And when it comes to education, that, that is something that's very much at the heart of, of some of the work that you've been doing. Um, I understand that we've caught you right bang in the middle of a very a particular a particular week. Um, yeah. and, and that's actually part of your attempts at trying to introduce diversity specifically into the Bordeaux wine scene. How do you do that? And, and why do you think it's so important? I am very lucky to have a fantastic partner and friend. Her name is Jane Anson, a worldwide known wine critic specialized in Bordeaux. And she did a write-up about me on the King Decanter magazine. And when I told her my story about coming to Bordeaux, not being able to find a job, as even as a wine expert who had been working in the wine industry since 99, she was shocked. She was like, that's not possible. I told her, yes, it is. Even for those who knew me, 
I came here and nobody gave me a job. And I now had to create my own business. And because I have created a business that became, let's say, successful, becoming known by people, I just feel the need for other people not to have to go through the troubles I went through. And I said to her, we need to open Bordeaux. We need to show people that the, the other, you don't have to be the same color. You don't have to have blue eyes. You don't have to have blonde hair to work in the Bordeaux wine world. You don't have to even speak French. The beauty of the wine industry is the love of wine. And if we could only just understand that and encourage people from every other part of the world to come into the wine business here in Bordeaux, we would be better for it. Bordeaux business started with Danish and English wine merchants. So foreigners have always played a, played a big part in the Bordeaux industry. So why would that not also continue? So Today, to, Yes. Today, thank you, sir. Rosa, thank you so much for giving us <laughs> an insight into the work that you do, you know, that you're doing. And we wish you the very best of luck with the rest of your, your mentoring week that I believe you're currently holding in, uh, really in Bordeaux at the it. moment. Um, that is, though, unfortunately, ha all that we have time for for Eye on Africa at the moment. Thanks, everyone, so much for joining us. Do so again if you can. Till then, take care. Me gusta Francia 24 horas porque nos enteramos de las noticias de Europa, de América Latina y de todos lados. Nos gusta mucho la cultura francesa. The world is ever changing. The news doesn't wait. That's why at France 24, we'll always be there to help make sense of world events. For the best international coverage, 24 hours a day, no matter what, France 24 is with you everywhere, all the time. Liberté, égalité, actualité. World Views. France 24 brings you all the news from hotspots around the world. And France, the Middle East, the Americas, Africa, in Asia, from Europe to Oceania. Take a daily trip across borders to keep abreast of all the latest international news. Get exclusive updates from our correspondents around the globe. Our daily reports will take you to all four corners of the world. Every day, watch World Views on France 24 and France24.com.